Uh, I think that there's going to be a lot of value uh, to be had on the Minnesota side of things, particularly in terms of Kirk Cousins, who I think might be just kind of an afterthought on this slate overall. Uh, But I like Cousins quite a bit. Uh, What are your first thoughts? I like Kirk Cousins a lot, too. He's $7,600, which means that he is tied with Tom Brady for the cheapest quarterback on the full four games, cheapest starting quarterback (laughs) on the full four games slate. Taysom Hill's a tight end, if you want to count him. Uh, But Kirk Cousins is interesting because I know that we had this, like, narrative in our head about how bad Kirk Cousins is in big spots, and we have this narrative, too, that the offensive line is going to struggle. That very well could happen because they are on the road in a really tough environment and bad lines don't travel, but the Saints are not fully healthy. And this has gone kind of overlooked because they haven't played good opponents recently, but they don't have Sheldon Rankins and Marcus Davenport. And if you look at the Quan Edge and look at their splits with and without Rankins this year, without Rankins in the field, they allow 4.65 yards per carry and 8.15 yards per pass attempt. It is 3.57 and it's 6.11 with him out there. That is a massive loss, and that doesn't even account for the time that he has missed with Marcus Davenport out. Because again, the the teams they played are the Titans with no Derrick Henry, and then the Panthers with Will Greer slash Kyle Allen. So it hasn't mattered that they've missed those guys, but now against a Vikings team that is, again, fully healthy for the first time since week six, that's really good for Kirk Cousins. And again, he's really cheap, so I'm with you, I think that there are paths to total destruction and oblivion for Kirk Cousins, but there are also paths to a really good game. And so for $7,600, I think he's really fun as long as you are okay with the floor being pretty bad. Yeah, I mean, the floor is bad. Uh, if you, but if you look through his game log, I mean, uh, so three games ago, 242 yards, one passing touchdown, you know, shy of 14 Fanduel points, and all three of these actually... Uh, so 242 yards, then 207, then 122, one touchdown in each of them. Again, hasn't broken 14 Fanduel points in any of those past three games. And it's been quite some time since Kirk Cousins really turned things around early in the season, uh, back in like week five. So I, I think that he's well out of the like the mind of the common or just even, I mean, I overlooked Kirk Cousins until I really thought about it. Yeah. Uh, so I think he's going to be kind of off the radar uh, he's a, uh, a road underdog. You you mentioned the concerns, but I mean, he, he's fourth in passing net expected points per drop back since week five. Uh, he has four games against top half pass defenses, uh, 234 yards, not great, but 2.3 touchdowns, uh, well above average passing efficiency in that split. Uh, I think getting Dalvin Cook could hurt his touchdown equity, but I think it's also Dalvin Cook's kind of good enough to boost the offense. He's one of the few running backs so I actually feel that way. Uh, Adam Thielen's coming back. Uh, I mean, he's been back for about a game and a half, really, in terms of snaps. So, I mean, things, like you said, this this offense is getting a bit healthier, uh, and I think that Kirk Cousins is one of the more interesting plays on the full slate. I fully agree, and we'll definitely be diving into him. And Drew Brees, too. I like Drew Brees a lot as well. 